Changing the World with a Laptop in Your Bedroom by Alan Fashion The problem with doing hobbies at home and posting work online is that they often involve using a computer and they are time-consuming. It can mean that you don't have any time for normal interests. Home computers have a health downside such as radiation from the screen, keying is bad for your hands and sitting at a desk is airless. Also, having a computer involves a lot of clutter such as paper, computer hardware and peripherals, office furniture, pens and paper notepads. These are untidy and cause confusion and stress trying to find things. Also, clutter makes it hard to clean in a room and it attracts dust in itself. The electric current in computers also attracts dust. As well, electricity, radiation from the screen and some of the substances used in the manufacture of computers are carcinogenic. And radiation from the screen will affect concentration. Lack of concentration makes it difficult for people to do things. These are things such as reading a book or concentrating afterward on a show on the radio. Hobbies are things you do of a practical nature such as keeping a newspaper clipping scrapbook, making a model or painting a picture. And interests are things you read about, watch on television or listen to on the radio. However, you can also read about your hobbies such as a book on how to draw. And hobbies can help you to understand an interest better such as understanding an art book better on a famous artist. Some hobbies are time-consuming such as writing a novel will be time-consuming. Nonetheless, you can do shorter writing such as short stories or poetry. But then, you hear now that there are ways of successfully writing a novel much quicker. This is quicker than the six months or year that you used to hear about. So it can really get a bit confusing. But you could always just write poems and short stories. And this is particularly if you were still going to get a readership for them. Producing a creative work and then posting it online can be exciting. The excitement can be addictive. Also, Posting stuff online will involve extra work. This is in making it publishable. Also, it can be a worry to post stuff online. For example, this is if work is criticized or people say it is not good enough. If you got poor social skills from using a computer and not keeping up with your usual interests, then you might keep writing or doing art just out of low self-esteem. This is when you don't have such good friends anymore. Or you have fewer friends. As well, you have time on your hands. So you spend some time still using a computer when you have too much time on your hands anyway. It is just that if you have more time than you did before, then with all this extra time you could just spend a bit of it on doing hobbies and using a computer. As well. You might not have friends that expect you to talk about TV. And you might only see your friends once a week. So you save up some conversation for them. As well, you don't feel like doing stuff just after they've left. Nor do you feel like it just the day after either. But then, you can't just spend a bit of time on your computer. This is such as if you only intended to waste a bit of it pleasantly while doing something and not doing hardly anything. And instead, you end up spending all your time on a computer. So why is it that you spend so much time on your computer and you can't just take adequate breaks, then get off it and do something else? The answer is that you really might not just be taking breaks when you should do. And the only thing you really need to do is that you should just be looking at the clock for when your next break is. This is even when using a smart television. You have to sit nearer a smart television than you do a normal television. So, radiation is still important to how you use your smart TV. Perhaps, you should try this and see if it works. If it doesn't work. It might be because you have nothing to do with your breaks. And so you don't take long enough breaks because of this. 
try finding something to do. Only you will know what else you might like to do. Or you can use your computer for only a bit each day. Then, you can do all the normal things as well. This is if you did take your breaks. As well, once you have enough of your hobby projects done so that you don't still keep thinking about them then you'll naturally do other things. It might be that it is impossible to use a computer for too long each day. For example, you can't use it for more than one or two hours maximum on any day. Then when you try to use your computer less and take breaks and it is still not working, it might be that you are overambitious. Or it might just be that you are too keen to finish off work quickly. Again, as was said earlier, it might help if you try to do shorter or less ambitious written or video works, photography and painting, musical compositions or other hobbies. This will mean that you finish each work quicker. As well, you will still get a sense of achievement. It will be easier to plan your creative hobbies doing it this way. Because of eye strain, you can only read for about 3 hours a day. As well, you can only look at a screen for about 3 hours a day. This is because of radiation. Therefore, if you do creative writing for 3 hours a day, it would make sense that you can't do any normal reading or television afterward. Perhaps, do some other computer hobby such as art or video making and don't just write a novel. Creative writing involves spending time on your computer. You have to read from the screen and key or use speech recognition. But computers do have tools to help you. You can write faster and with less effort on a word processor than you can on paper or with a typewriter. The computer's tools that help writers, in particular, are speech recognition and the proofreading and editing tools. Also, you have all else that you get on a computer. To publish online, you will need to organize your writing to have work ready to publish. This will have to be something that you have written recently. And this is only so it is not out of date when you publish it. If you do publish anything even if it was recent, the material can still get out of date once it had been published. It can get out of date because of social, technological or other change. So consider these points when trying to get a lot of work done. And consider them as well when being ambitious for your writing. You can try working on only one creative piece at a time. And you don't have to have lots of works on the go. But this is if you do in fact find it harder to manage many works. Some people do actually like to have more than one work they are doing at any one time. And they find, in fact, that they can manage more easily this way. You will have generally to find a third way. A third way is where you have all the success you want without doing so much work. Nor does it take so much of your time using a computer or of your time more generally. That is the best solution for anyone. Not having time for anything else but your computer will make you into a computer bore. Being a computer bore will likely lose you your friends. And you could become unhappy more generally. Try better to manage your computer, your life and your hobbies. Also, you want to be able to talk about your computer without being called a bore about it. And you want to have some time off your computer to do other hobbies and interests that you can talk about. Also, you want to have a good life that your friends will see when they meet you. And if you have a good life that others can see, people will want to be your friends. Computers can be good social skills and not the reverse. It is just a case of managing them properly. Also, it is important to have a better work-life balance and to feel good about your writing. Having better concentration improves so many areas of your life, doing computer hobbies and anything else. Things about computers can affect concentration. Watching the text going across the screen affects concentration. But ways around this are to type from handwritten notes and use copy and paste. As well, 
you can use speech recognition as it inserts a line at a time. An ergonomic desk and office chair will also improve your concentration. As well, generally following all health advice about computers will help with concentration. Sitting for a long time at a desk increases girth, which is very bad for health, bad for concentration and for anyone's self-esteem as well. There are solutions proposed for computer problems. But some of them take a bit of working out. Also, they often cost extra money. An example is that you can make notes on a portable sound recorder. This reduces screen time. Also, it avoids having to use your hands too much such as to handwrite on paper if you wanted to make a note. But portable sound recorders also have problems with them. They have carcinogens that might cause throat cancer. Still, they recommend that you hold them at an arm's length. Yet, portable sound recorders might possibly reduce screen time. This is when radiation from the screen is carcinogenic as well. Screen radiation has an added effect of drying the skin on the face. And screen radiation can affect the brain behind the face as well. When they talk about this, it is perhaps only euphemistically termed your concentration. Some portable sound recorders have downloadable sound files and some don't. You might prefer the downloadable ones as they have more utility. But then they cost more. Sound can add variety to making notes. This will mean they are less boring. So it encourages you to make more notes you might not have done otherwise. This is when using sound makes it more interesting. Overall, sound and other technologies can encourage you to spend more time on your computer. Perhaps if you didn't have them, then you would become quickly bored. That means that using sound you spend more time on your computer. And this is even if some of this time is spent on a portable sound recorder and not in front of a hot screen. In the end, you might only use a computer because it is interesting. Also, really it is for no other reason that you use a computer. This is particularly one at home. Perhaps, don't be so enthralled by all the different technologies that you can use. Just see them instead as being tools that can help you. Look closely at how they can help you and when they can help you. And don't use them only to add interest. As well, this is when hobbies such as creative arts have successes along the way and milestones in them such as when finishing works. And a hobby on a computer does not have to be just mindless clicking of buttons or mindlessly interacting with the technology in some other way. Talking into a portable sound recorder, talking more generally or dictating using speech recognition is bad for oral hygiene. And it is bad for personal hygiene as well. Computer keyboards, computer screens and sitting at a desk are also unhygienic. However, if you wash your hands and don't do it for too long, then there should really be no problems. Other health advice that can have an effect on personal hygiene is to have an ergonomic desk and chair, to have a desk fan or window open, to avoid glare on the screen, to have your desk facing the room and not against a wall and other things. Doing more than one work at one time can cause a cross-fertilization of ideas. This cross-fertilization of ideas can mean that you write for longer than you intended. But so can reading a published book by someone else cause a cross-fertilization of ideas. However, it might not be as much. As well, a TV show or film can generate many ideas for your own writing or other art. So if you have quite a bit of time to watch TV, to read and to write and do art as well, then this cross-fertilization of ideas can put pressure on your time. Something usually has to give and it will either be your computer or other things you do off your computer. You may spend all your time on your computer if you decide that you still want to use it. Perhaps, 
You spend all your time doing hobbies on your computer or you also use your computer for other things as well. This is when it is just so hard to get off your computer. Also, it is addictive to click on links. Possibly, as well, sitting in front of a flickering screen can affect the eyes. And some people say that this is addictive as well. As well, there is the addictive quality of getting more work done using the computer's productivity tools. You really can produce more and better creative works. This might be more than you ever imagined was possible. And this boost to your self-esteem is addictive as well. A personal experience somebody had was that he wanted to use a computer less and as well, he wanted to make fewer handwritten notes. This was because of worries about doing too much with his hands and getting bad hands. Also, using a computer and handwriting created other worries. They were about health, planning work and about finding time to do other things than using a computer or writing. When the subject looked at dozens of pages of handwritten notes that he was typing up on his computer, he could see that it was all the same subject as published books he was reading. And this was even though he had read only the first few chapters of these books. Also, he realized that he had been struggling with them really quite a bit. Now, when he realized where so many of his ideas came from, he could see that his own notes were poor compared to the books he'd read. As well, these books were published already. And even then, they were not major works on the subject. Another reason to write is if you were doing an English course. Students have the help of their teachers. And they can talk to others on their course. Also, General learning might help you to organize better any notes you make and to write generally better as well. Other people who might write are people who got behind a bit in their own reading and in watching television that anyone would normally do. It had begun to affect their social skills. And it had become a worry. For example, it had begun to affect their ability to communicate at work or to others generally. So to help themselves remember better what they had read or watched on television, they made a few helpful notes. And sometimes they made imaginative notes. This was in the form of non-fiction short pieces, reviews and newspaper or magazine-like articles. They hoped to be able to write quickly so it would be no hassle. As well, they also wrote short stories and poetry. Still, after a while, they began using their computers more and more. Eventually, they were on them all the time. And now, they became computer bores. People can sometimes forget their original purpose. Then, they become stressed from this lack of direction or from things going wrong for them due to poor planning. Also, people might write who have read a lot recently and watched lots on television. They became bored with the media. Really, they are just looking for something that will waste their time. So they get a toy to play with. Or they fantasize about being an artist. But then, when they take so long learning the software, they forget their original ambition. More other people might write because they have a lot of spare time on their hands and don't just want to read or watch television all day. Yet more people might write because they feel they have something to say, such as personal experiences they have had. So they set them down. And because they feel these experiences are worthwhile to them, they think that others would also like to read them. Any of these would-be writers described here might feel that others would want to read anything they had written. This is particularly if it was any good. People would want to read their works just as good stories. Also, it is if readers are going to be pleasantly interested or entertained. Or it is any way at all that their book might fulfill somebody's criteria for reading it. The writer might have something good to say creatively and that is enough on its own. Also, if any book just said something well, then readers might like it.
or your book might have said things better than some other books on the market. Also, it could be a new book was more up to date. If you write regularly, you are likely to improve your writing's quality. And so knowing this, you might spend even more time on your computer. This is so you can practice when that makes such a difference. But for writers, it means more computer time, screen time, keying and using speech or other alternative input technologies. This is when only trying to be a better writer. Or it is just trying to do anything that might be worthwhile. The publication, it seems if you are published, will as well bring extra worries and extra work. This is even more than just a hobby you were a bit obsessed with in the past. It is more than that today because today you can go online. Online, you can get readers, viewers and listeners. So that is an additional incentive to spend all your time on your computer. You might hear that writers should always aim to entertain. This is to avoid stress. As well, you should entertain as the only thing you're trying to do. Anyone else other than your readers for fiction such as somebody who wants a political viewpoint could just read a newspaper. Or he could watch the TV news. And this is particularly when newspapers have already been read by most people. Authors have also read them themselves. And they got their views from it if that is what they want to say. There is no good reason just to repeat these views as a writer. These are views you think are right just from having read a newspaper. Perhaps, though, you think it is true and it should be said again. However, newspapers today have more pages. As well, you have 24-hour news stations. Also, with the internet, many people can still read the original article. And many views are repeated again in the same newspaper. Readers, as well, can also read again any book or magazine. And readers may really be better off going to the original. This is instead of and better than your own piece of hacked off writing. They say that there are comparatively few political views. At least, this is compared to the many ways a novel can entertain people. In fact, there are often only two choices of political parties or ideologies at a general election. And many people don't even bother to vote. This is despite sometimes reading newspapers for years before an election. When the issues are crystallized such as at an election, voters can't make up their minds. Or they feel that they don't really have any strong views after all. There sometimes seem very few issues worth discussing anyway and only a very few differences between the main parties. Still, a few months after the election, people start reading the newspapers again. Now, they feel that there are so many possibilities to discuss, to talk about or to concern themselves with again. Yet, if ordinary people tried to write a non-fiction book or even a novel about politics, it would often be no different from anything that they'd read in the newspapers. Or it would be the same as a popular history book. This might be similar to what they'd read and enjoyed themselves. But perhaps, they did not feel able to talk about it properly after they had read it. Or they did not know other people who would talk about it nearly enough like they had wanted to do. As well, somebody might have ignored them or been rude to them. And they didn't know whom else to ask about it. Nobody it seemed had the time or inclination. This is if they weren't actually being rude to them. So years later, still remembering this hurt, they wrote the whole thing themselves out all over again. It was to communicate it to a page if not a real person. And it was to say it in their words how they would say it. This was as if they were talking about it all those years ago. If this is like you, then you can stop it now. You can stop it by finding another person that you can talk to about it. Also, you can read these things again. And you can see what you think of them the second time around. 
For example, is there anything you can now see is wrong with it? Perhaps, it is not as good as you thought it was once. And that is why people didn't want to talk back to you about it. Or you might have missed something the first time. So you didn't talk about it correctly anyway. Have you, in fact since then, talked to other people about the topic? If you have, then you don't need to write it all down. Alternatively, if you are behind with your reading, the quick way to catch up might just be by watching some television. Or you can read a book. But whatever you do, you should make purposeful notes. And don't just write for the sake of writing things down. Nor just make any notes. You should think instead what would be most useful. Also, you can think of the reason you wanted them in the first place. And you can think about anything else to do with them that will help. This is to keep your notes short and yet for them still to be useful to you. Watching television improves your general knowledge faster than reading does. Possibly, you can just sit in front of your TV, rest in your favorite armchair and really enjoy it for the next couple of weeks. You are less likely to get odd thoughts and words going around in your head than if you were reading a book. Having all these words going around in your head is distracting. So you stop consuming as much media. And then your general knowledge, your social skills and anything else you're trying to do might go to zero again. Some people find that making notes stops the words going around in their head. And some people find that it increases them. Possibly, just do what works for you. Also, it takes too long only reading to get good social skills. Some books might really give you very little to say. TV as well is usually all a high standard. This is despite what you hear. And nor does it take much concentration to watch. This is when you just have to sit in front of it. Other people as well will likely have seen the same shows. Or your friends can easily today look them up if you mention them. So television is good social skills. And for lots of other reasons as well it is good social skills. When you haven't already seen many movies, dramas, comedies and documentaries so that you are new to them, then you really have an advantage in watching TV now. It is bound to improve your social skills if you are not already bored with it. Also, your friends will want to talk to you about the television. This is when they can see that you are genuinely interested and excited by it. They want some of that feeling as well to come back on them. So at least for a time, it is excellent social skills to watch television. This is such as when you have got behind and then caught up a bit. And so you have a fresh take on it. Also, it is when you've not seen all the shows there are to see already. And, as well, you've not seen them hundreds of times. So talking about TV when you've missed it for a bit is good social skills. And later on, once you're not so new to the TV that it is always interesting, you can then start doing some more reading again. Solutions Less computer time Having less screen time by taking breaks and using your computer less each day means that you might improve your concentration for writing and any other activity you do. And this is both on and off your computer. You can avoid so much computer time. Do art on paper. Also, you can still read print publications at least sometimes. And you can listen to the radio. As well. You can keep fit by not staying on your computer all the time and make time instead to do exercises or to go to the park. To have less computer time, do not watch video on your computer if you're writing. Also, you can speed up publication if the whole process from book idea to publication takes less long and every stage is faster. The best way for an individual author to do this is only to work on one MS at one time and to have good technical and creative skills in writing and art or photography for covers.
Also, you have a computer to help you. Complexity. Nor is complexity something that you want. And nor do you want it just because your computer can help you with it and so you should then be able to manage it. Often complexity does still make it harder and less manageable. You might make every attempt to reduce the real and computer complexity of tasks you do. Also, reducing complexity means you are making less work for yourself, taking less time and it is not as much effort. And this is even if you used your computer expertly. You will usually always reduce the amount of time and worry if the real task is easier and no matter how much you try to use your computer better. To reduce complexity, you can have fewer files and ideally, just have one file you're working on. You can reduce the number of things you're doing with forward slash to a file and you can have a checklist to help remind you and to simplify the task. It helps to reduce the number of things you have to think about such as by not having a cross-fertilization of ideas between different creative works you're working on. Also, you want to have more time for reading about the book idea you are writing and more time for reading to study the market. And you want as well more time for your own general reading, watching television and other hobbies. When you feel less stressed and you have a better work-life balance, then you feel less stressed about your writing as well, do it better and don't waste so much time in it. And you really need not spend so much time on it. If stressed, you do activities to do with your creative writing or anything else only because you are worried but that have no real value. Tools Speech recognition can help you. And you can improve the quality of your typing and increase your typing speed. Some find that speech recognition is more relaxing and keeps their concentration better than typing. And more others find that if they type better with their fingers on the home keys, it is more relaxing than typing poorly. Also, it is essential for good health. An average typing speed for a trained typist is 35 words per minute, but you can't do this if you're thinking as you are typing onto the screen. You will have better concentration if you handwrite your story or notes first and then type them up without making any changes. However, to do this, you would really need a typing table. This table has a ledge that comes out. It is next to you for ergonomic typing from notes. Most desks sold today for use with computers do not have this ledge. If you run antivirus software on your computer and you run speed up programs, then speech recognition can be faster. Also, you can give your computer training so it recognizes your voice better. And you can adjust the settings for your microphone. As well, you can improve the quality of your speaking voice for your computer to recognize more. You can improve the quality of your speaking voice by not having so much caffeine and by drinking water. Also, you can do relaxation exercises such as rolling your shoulders. And you can practice speaking aloud or doing tongue twisters. Doing physical exercise helps your voice as does more generally looking after your health. You also have things you can do yourself on or off your computer to learn how to write better so your work needs less proofreading and editing. It saves a massive amount of time if it is almost all of it right first time. You can do this by revising what you did when you were last in full-time education, you can go on a course or you can learn more about the subject from published books. You might also try reading anything and particularly try reading some novels. Also, grammar and as well style checkers explain mistakes you've made. So you can make a note of these to remember not to do them again. This improves your writing in the future. What you write. Write what you know. Fiction is called fiction because it never happened, not to anyone and definitely not to the writer. Write what you know is common advice given to writers. But what do you know? If you read a lot, then you might know about a particular genre and could write one yourself. 
Do vampires really exist? How many horror authors have met one? Probably, not many of them have. So you could write a vampire story yourself even if you don't know about it from your own life experiences. Writing fiction where you write something people you know aren't going to recognize themselves in it is less stressful. And writing about a fictional world that is not like the real world people live in, have their lives in and care how it is described and talked about is less stressful. Writer's self-help questions answered. Why do so many people worry today? And what worries them? Often why is answered simply in that usually everyone finds that change, and any change, can be a worry. And change has been a cause of anxiety throughout history. This book looks at change and says a few things about it. Getting the news. There is more news than ever online, in print publications and on the TV and the radio. Much of this is possible because of digital technology such as digital video and photography. You don't need a computer of your own as TV companies, radio stations and print publications use this technology. As well, websites use it to produce content that is better, cheaper and available more quickly. Computers have reduced the admin costs of media companies. And computers have improved the quality of media products by better collaboration tools used by the producers, easier and faster editing of media content and as well, they are safer technology anyone would want to use. You don't have to do your own writing or art. Everyone else is already using this technology. And it is no longer anything new. Just perhaps sit back and enjoy all the new media content and old shows you can see. And don't use a computer word processor, art software or other programs just because digital technology is cheap. Also, don't use it when, just for the moment if not longer, it only happens you have it on your and on everyone else's PC. The End